The uh, Assistant Treasurer. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And the member for Sydney had no energy, no conviction, no policy, no ideas in that little speech because you know why? She's part of the guilty party, part of the party that took a situation with no government debt, no government debt, no interest on that debt, and gave us a trajectory of $667 billion worth of debt and an interest bill of $1 billion a month growing to $3 billion a month. And who could forget, who could forget those 21,000 checks for $900 to dead people and those 27,000 checks for $900 to people overseas? And who could forget that deadly, costly pink bat disaster? Who could forget cash for clunkers? Who could forget the overpriced school halls? Who could forget the $11 billion wasted on a failed border protection Order. policy that tragically saw lives lost at sea? Who could forget more than $29 billion wasted on an NBN? Who could forget six small business ministers in just six years as the member for Sydney walks out cowardly from this place because she's refused to listen to the arguments, refused to take the blame for her poor performance, her poor performance as part of a government that received the lowest primary vote in 100 years. Her party, because of its poor economic performance, received the lowest primary vote in 100 years in contrast in contrast mr deputy speaker this government this government has gone on with the job of creating more than 300,000 jobs and more than 170,000 jobs for women more than 170,000 jobs for women so the female workforce participation Order. is at its highest levels since records first began and who can forget those three free trade agreements with our biggest trading partners in Asia, with Korea, with Japan and with China. And there is a fault line here. There is a fault line in this parliament between those on this side of the House who believe in jobs yep. through free trade and those in opposite who believe in xenophobic campaigns where they run at the behest yep. of the union movement. Did you know? Did you know? that the 95 per cent of all the goods we export to China will be tariff-free over the life of this agreement? Did you know that Australian dairy farmers that currently are behind their New Zealand cousins because New Zealand has no tariffs on its dairy or did you, will benefit from this agreement? Or did you know that Australian wine producers that currently have up to a 14 per cent tariff on their exports to China and behind their New Zealand cousins who don't have any tariffs on their exports to China will all benefit under this agreement. And what about in financial services, Mr. Speaker? 400,000 jobs in Australia are employed in financial services. It's nearly 10 per cent of our economy, and we will be supercharged in the financial services sector by virtue of this China-Australia free trade agreement. Because we are good in wealth management, we are good in banking, we are good in superannuation, and they're the products that we will export into Asia and benefit from the three billion people that enter into that middle class over the coming decades. And what about our small businesses in Australia? The more than two million small businesses that employ more than four million people who benefit from the lowest small business company tax rates in Australia's history as a result of Joe Hockey as last budget. Who can benefit more than small business and big business for more than two trillion dollars that we've cut from red tape? Who can benefit from those innovative policies like getting rid of the employee share ownership um, schemes that existed under Labor and producing a much more a small business um, a friendly uh, employee share ownership schemes under this government? And what about in tax? What about in tax what we've done, abolishing the carbon tax, abolishing the mining tax, not going through with Labor's policies of an extra, more than billions of dollars extra on superannuation taxes or negative gearing taxes or multinational taxes that Aki and the BCA say will send investment and jobs offshore? You see, what about our infrastructure policies, a record $50 billion spent on infrastructure projects like the West Connect, and it would have been on the East-West Link but for the Labor Party introducing sovereign in risk into this country by ripping up contracts. You see, those on the opposite, led by the Leader of the Opposition, aren't fit to govern no. again because they don't recognise the fault of their ways and they don't recognise that we in the
Coalition a best place to serve the Australian people. Thank the member.